The so-called Mask of Agamemnon, which was discovered by Heinrich Schliemann in 1876 at Mycenae, now believed to predate the legendary Trojan War by 300 years in Greek mythology, Agamemnon was a king of Mycenae. The son, or grandson, of King Atreus and Queen Arope, the brother of Menelaus, the husband of Clytemnestra and the father of Iphigenia, Electra or Laodike, Orestes and Chrysothemis. Legends make him the king of Mycenae or Argos, thought to be different names for the same area. When Menelaus's wife, Helen, was taken to Troy by Paris, Agamemnon commanded the united Greek armed forces in the ensuing Trojan War. Upon Agamemnon's return from Troy, he was killed by Aegisthus, the lover of his wife Clytemnestra. In old versions of the story, the scene of the murder, when it is specified, is usually the house of Aegisthus, who has not taken up residence in Agamemnon's palace, and it involves an ambush and the deaths of Agamemnon's followers as well. In some later versions Clytemnestra herself does the killing, or she and Aegisthus act together, killing Agamemnon in his own home. His name in Greek, Gamma Alpha Mu Mu Nu Omega Nu, means very steadfast, unbowed or very resolute. The word comes from Gamma Alpha Mu Delta Mu Omega Nu from Gamma Alpha Nu, very much in Mu Delta Omicron Mu Alpha Iota, think on. Agamemnon was a descendant of Pelops son of Tantalus. According to the usual version of the story, followed by the Iliad and Odyssey of Homer, Agamemnon and his younger brother Menelaus were the sons of Atreus, king of Mycenae and Arope daughter of the Cretan king Catreus. However, according to another tradition, Agamemnon and Menelaus were the sons of Atreus' son Pleisthenes, with their mother being Arope, Cleola, or Arephile. According to this tradition Pleisthenes died young, with Agamemnon and Menelaus being raised by Atreus. Agamemnon had a sister Anaxibia who married Strophius, the son of Chrysus. Agamemnon's father, Atreus, murdered the sons of his twin brother Thyestes and fed them to Thyestes after discovering Thyestes' adultery with his wife Arope. Thyestes fathered Aegisthus with his own daughter, Pelopea, and this son vowed gruesome revenge on Atreus' children. Aegisthus murdered Atreus, restored Thyestes to the throne and took possession of the throne of Mycenae and jointly ruled with his father. During this period, Agamemnon and his brother, Menelaus, took refuge with Tyndareus, king of Sparta. There they respectively married Tyndareus' daughters Clytemnestra and Helen. Agamemnon and Clytemnestra had four children, one son, Orestes, and three daughters, Iphigenia, Electra, and Chrysothemis. Menelaus succeeded Tyndareus in Sparta, while Agamemnon, with his brother's assistance, drove out Aegisthus and Thyestes to recover his father's kingdom. He extended his dominion by conquest and became the most powerful prince in Greece. Agamemnon's family history had been tarnished by murder, incest, and treachery, consequences of a heinous crime perpetrated by his ancestor, Tantalus, and then of a curse placed upon Pelops, son of Tantalus, by Myrtilus, whom he had murdered. Thus misfortune hounded successive generations of the house of Atreus, until atoned by Orestes in a court of justice held jointly by humans and gods. Charles de la Fosse, Le Sacrifice Diphigenia Agamemnon gathered the reluctant Greek forces to sail for Troy. In order to recruit Odysseus, who was feigning madness so as to not have to go to war, Agamemnon sent Polymedes, who threatened to kill Odysseus' infant son Telemachus. Odysseus was forced to stop acting mad in order to save his son and join the assembled Greek forces. Preparing to depart from Alice, a port in Boeotia, Agamemnon's army incurred the wrath of the goddess Artemis. There are several reasons throughout myth for such wrath, in Aeschylus' play Agamemnon, Artemis is angry for the young man who will die at Troy. Whereas in Sophocles' Electra, Agamemnon has slain an animal sacred to Artemis, and subsequently boasted that he was Artemis' equal in hunting. Misfortunes, including a plague and a lack of wind, prevented the army from sailing. Finally, the prophet Kalkos announced that the wrath of the goddess could only be propitiated by the sacrifice of Agamemnon's daughter Iphigenia. Classical dramatizations differ on how willing either father or daughter was to this fate. Some include such trickery as claiming she was to be married to Achilles, but Agamemnon did eventually sacrifice Iphigenia. Her death appeased Artemis, and the Greek army set out for Troy. Several alternatives to the human sacrifice have been presented in Greek mythology. Other sources, such as Iphigenia at Alice, say that Agamemnon was prepared to kill his daughter, but that Artemis accepted a deer in her place, and whisked her away to Taurus in the Crimean Peninsula. Hesiod said she became the goddess Hecate. During the war, but before the events of the Iliad, Odysseus contrived a plan to get revenge on Polymedes for threatening his son's life. 
by forging a letter from Priam, king of the Trojans, and cashing some gold in Polymedes' tent, Odysseus had Polymedes accused of treason, and Agamemnon ordered him stoned to death. Achilles' surrender of Brishes to Agamemnon, from the house of the tragic poet in Pompeii, Fresco, 1st century AD, now in the Naples National. Archaeological Museum The Iliad tells the story about the quarrel between Agamemnon and Achilles in the final year of the war. In Book 1, following one of the Achaean army's raids, Chrysis, daughter of Chryses, one of Apollo's priests, was taken as a war prize by Agamemnon. Chryses pleaded with Agamemnon to free his daughter but was met with little success. Chryses then prayed to Apollo for the safe return of his daughter, which Apollo responded to by unleashing a plague over the Achaean army. After learning from the prophet Kalkos that the plague could be dispelled by returning Chrysis to her father, Agamemnon reluctantly agreed and released his prize. However, as compensation for his lost prize, Agamemnon demanded a new prize. He stole an attractive slave called Brishes, one of the spoils of war, from Achilles. This creates a rift between Achilles and Agamemnon, causing Achilles to withdraw from battle and refuse to fight for now. Agamemnon then receives a dream from Zeus telling him to rally his forces and attack the Trojans in Book 2. After several days of fighting, including duels between Menelaus and Paris, and between Ajax and Hector, the Achaeans are pushed back to the fortifications around their ships. In Book 9, Agamemnon, having realized Achilles's importance in winning the war against the Trojan army, sends ambassadors begging for Achilles to return, offering him riches in the hand of his daughter in marriage. Achilles refuses, only being spurred back into action when Patroclus was killed in battle by Hector, eldest son of King Priam and Queen Hecuba. In Book 19 Agamemnon reconciles with Achilles, giving him the offered rewards for returning to the war, before Achilles goes out to turn back the Trojans and duel Hector. After Hector's death, Agamemnon assists Achilles in performing Patroclus' funeral in Book 23. Agamemnon volunteers for the javelin throwing contest, one of the games being held in Patroclus' honor, but his skill with a javelin is so well known that Achilles awards him the prize without contest. Although not the equal of Achilles in bravery, Agamemnon was a representative of kingly authority. As commander in chief, he summoned the princes to the council and led the army in battle. His chief fault was his overwhelming haughtiness, an overexalted opinion of his position that led him to insult Chryses and Achilles, thereby bringing great disaster upon the Greeks. Agamemnon was the commander in chief of the Greeks during the Trojan War. During the fighting, Agamemnon killed Anaphis and 15 other Trojan soldiers, according to one source. In the Iliad itself, he's shown to slaughter hundreds more in Book 11 during his Aristia loosely translated to Day of Glory which is the most similar to Achilles' Aristia in Book 21. They both are compared to lions and destructive fires in battle, their hands are described as splattered with gore and invincible, the Trojans flee to the walls, they both are appealed to by one of their victims. They are both avoided by Hector, they both get wounded in the arm or hand, and they both kill the one who wounded them. Even before his Aristia, Agamemnon was considered to be one of the three best warriors on the Greek side as proven when Hector challenges any champion of the Greek side to fight him in Book 7. And Agamemnon is one of the three Hector most wishes to fight out of the nine strongest Greek warriors who volunteered. The suicide of Ajax depicted on Greek pottery by Exequias, now on display at the Chateau Musée de Boulogne sur Mer according to Sophocles's Ajax after Achilles had fallen in battle, Agamemnon and Menelaus awarded Achilles' armor to Odysseus. This angers Ajax, who feels he is the now the strongest among the Achaean warriors and so deserves the armor. Ajax considers killing them, but is driven to madness by Athena and instead slaughters the herdsmen and cattle that had not yet been divided as spoils of war. He then commits suicide in shame for his actions. As Ajax dies he curses the sons of Atreus along with the entire Achaean army. Agamemnon and Menelaus consider leaving Ajax's body to rot, denying him a proper burial, but are convinced otherwise by Odysseus and Ajax's half-brother Teucer. After the capture of Troy, Cassandra, the doomed prophetess and daughter of Priam, fell to Agamemnon's lot in the distribution of the prizes of war. The assassination of Agamemnon, an illustration from stories from the Greek tragedians by Alfred Church, 1897. After a stormy voyage, Agamemnon and Cassandra landed in Argolis, or, in another version, were blown off course and landed in Aegisthus country. Clytemnestra, Agamemnon's wife, had taken Aegisthus, son of Thyestes, as a lover. When Agamemnon came home he was slain by Aegisthus or by Clytemnestra. According to the accounts given by Pindar and the tragedians, Agamemnon was slain in a bath by his wife alone, 
after being ensnared by a blanket or a net thrown over him to prevent resistance. Orestes slaying Clytemnestra in Homer's version of the story in the Odyssey, Aegisthus ambushes and kills Agamemnon in a feasting hall under the pretense of holding a feast in honor of Agamemnon's return home from Troy. Clytemnestra also killed Cassandra. Her jealousy of Cassandra, and her wrath at the sacrifice of Iphigenia and at Agamemnon's having gone to war over Helen of Troy, are said to have been the motives for her crime. Aegisthus and Clytemnestra then ruled Agamemnon's kingdom for a time, Aegisthus claiming his right of revenge for Atreus's crimes against Thyestes. Dot. Agamemnon's son Orestes later avenged his father's murder, with the help or encouragement of his sister Electra, by murdering Aegisthus and Clytemnestra. Thereby inciting the wrath of the Erinyes, winged goddesses who tracked down wrongdoers with their hounds' noses and drove them to insanity. Agamemnon's family history is rife with misfortune born from several curses contributing to the miasma around the family. The curse begins with Agamemnon's great-grandfather Tantalus, who was once in Zeus's favor until he tried to feed his son Pelops to the gods in order to test their omniscience, as well as stealing some ambrosia and nectar. Tantalus was then banished to the underworld where he stands in a pool of water that evaporates every time he reaches down to drink, above him is a fruit tree whose branches are blown just out of reach by the wind whenever he reaches for the fruit. This began the cursed house of Atreus, and his descendants would face similar or worse fates. Family tree of the house of Atreus later, using his relationship with Poseidon, Pelops convinced the god to grant him a chariot so he may beat Onimaeus, king of Pisa, in a race, and win the hand of his daughter Hippodamia. Myrtilus, who in some accounts helped Pelops win his chariot race, attempted to lie with Pelops' new bride Hippodamia. In anger, Pelops threw Myrtilus off a cliff, but not before Myrtilus cursed Pelops and his entire line. Pelops and Hippodamia had many children including Atreus and Thaites, who are said to have murdered their half-brother Chrysippus. Pelops banished Atreus and Thaites to Mycenae where Atreus became king. Thaites later conspired with Atreus' wife, Arabi, to supplant Atreus but they were unsuccessful. Atreus then killed Thaites' son and cooked him into a meal which Thaites ate, afterwards Atreus taunted him with the hands and feet of his now dead son. Thaites, on the advice of an oracle, then had a son with his own daughter Pelopia. Pelopia tried to expose the infant Aegisthus, but he was found by a shepherd and raised in the house of Atreus. When Aegisthus reached adulthood Thaites revealed the truth of his birth, and Aegisthus then killed Atreus. Atreus and Arope had three children, Agamemnon, Menelaus, and Anaxibia. The continued miasma surrounding the house of Atreus expresses itself in several events throughout their lives. Agamemnon is forced to sacrifice his own daughter, Iphigenia, to appease the gods and allow the Greek forces to sail for Troy. When Agamemnon refuses to return Chrysus to her father Chryses he brings plague upon the Greek camp. He is also later killed by his wife, Clytemnestra, who conspires with her new lover Aegisthus in revenge for the death of Iphigenia. Menelaus' wife, Helen of Troy, runs away with Paris, ultimately leading to the Trojan War. According to Book 4 of the Odyssey, after the war his fleet is scattered by the gods to Egypt and Crete. When Menelaus finally returns home, his marriage with Helen is now strained and they produce no sons. Both Agamemnon and Menelaus are cursed by Ajax for not granting him Achilles' armor as he commits suicide. Agamemnon and Clytemnestra had three remaining children, Electra, Orestes, and Chrysothemis. After growing to adulthood and being pressured by Electra, Orestes vows to avenge his father Agamemnon by killing his mother Clytemnestra and Aegisthus. After successfully doing so, he wanders the Greek countryside for many years constantly plagued by the Erinyes for his sins. Finally, with the help of Athena and Apollo he is absolved of his crimes, dispersing the miasma, and the curse on house Atreus comes to an end. Athenaeus tells a tale of how Agamemnon mourned the loss of his friend or lover Arginus, when he drowned in the Cephissus River. He buried him, honored with a tomb and a shrine to Aphrodite Arginus. This episode is also found in Clement of Alexandria, in Stephen of Byzantium, and in Propertius, three with minor variations. The fortunes of Agamemnon have formed the subject of numerous tragedies, ancient and modern, the most famous being the Oresteia of Aeschylus. In the legends of the Peloponnesus, Agamemnon was regarded as the highest type of a powerful monarch, and in Sparta he was worshipped under the title of Zeus Agamemnon. His tomb was pointed out among the ruins of Mycenae and Amicli. In works of art, there is considerable resemblance between the representations of Zeus, king of the gods, and Agamemnon, king of men. He is generally depicted with a scepter and diadem, conventional attributes of kings. 
Agamemnon's mare was named Etha. She was also one of two horses driven by Menelaus at the funeral games of Patroclus. In Homer's Odyssey Agamemnon made an appearance in the kingdom of Hades after his death. There, the former king met Odysseus and explained just how he was murdered before he offered Odysseus a warning about the dangers of trusting a woman. Agamemnon is a character in William Shakespeare's play Troilus and Cressida, set during the Trojan War. General works Pierre Narcisse Garon, Clytemnestra and Agamemnon with Iphigenia Giovanni Battista Tiepolo, The Sacrifice of Iphigenia with Achilles Jacques Louis David, The Anger of Achilles. Thanks for watching.